As you can see about you, the mighty 8th Air Force Museum contains an incomparable collection of World War II airplanes. The museum also offers the opportunity to experience a realistic bombing mission and tells many stories about the 8th Air Force in photographs and exhibits. But there is another story to be told. The story of the air bases in England from which those missions were flown. One such air base was that of the 401st Bomb Group located at Deanthorpe, England, shown in this aerial photograph. I flew 25 missions over Germany out of this field and I'd like to tell you about it. The nearby diorama which includes the area indicated by the yellow box, helps to tell that story. It depicts the flight line and portions of runways at that base and is an exact representation of the layout and buildings that stood there. Like virtually all other bomber bases in England, the air base at Deanthorpe had three runways designed to take advantage of prevailing winds. Surrounding the airfield was a perimeter track on which the aircraft taxied from their parking spaces to and from the runways. These parking spaces, called hard stands, were scattered around the field near the perimeter track. This winter scene shows aircraft parked on hard stands around the field in England. The diorama shows one such hard stand where ground crews are repairing a damaged B-17. Who were the men who serviced and repaired the planes and kept them flying? Crew chiefs and mechanics like those shown here who worked long days and nights maintaining the bombers were unsung heroes of the air war. Now to some of the important locations on the airfield. The briefing room where the crews were given instructions before each mission was located on the flight line in the area marked in yellow. Like most buildings on the base, the briefing room consisted of half round metal structure known as a Neeson hut by the British and a Quonset hut by the Americans. Having seen what it looked like on the outside, this picture shows how it looked inside as the crews were briefed on the day's missions. In a connected Neeson hut, crew members picked up their parachutes, flying clothes, and other items of equipment before heading out to their airplanes. And flight crews sat at tables to be debriefed after each mission. The control tower was located out on the airfield where flight controllers could see every part of the field and air crews could not miss the flares fired from the control tower to signal start engines, taxi, and takeoff. In England, control towers were usually square, two-story buildings that housed radio facilities on the first floor and flight controls on the second floor. Senior group officers regularly stood on the balcony to monitor aircraft returning from bombing missions. This highlighted area was known as the bomb dump, where bombs were stored ready for use. Arming the bombs and transporting them to the aircraft was no easy job. Bomb loading crews regularly worked at night, often in cold and snow or rain. Now this is the area where major aircraft repairs took place. Projects of this kind required heavy equipment, machine shops, and test facilities, which of course were not available to repair crews working at hard stands out in the field. This area is accurately depicted in the diorama, and the large hangar that forms a part of the area is presented with great attention to detail. On days when the group was flying a mission, the flight line in front of the briefing room was an important area for first responders. Crash and rescue crews were constantly on the ready in case of an emergency. 
and as the aircraft returned, doctors and other members of the group's medical corps were ready to give immediate attention to any of, any of the wounded. And at night, Red Cross representatives arrived at the flight line in a special van bringing coffee and donuts to hard-working ground crews. While the diorama covers facilities in and around the flight line, there was of course much more to the airbase. Unlike air bases in the United States, which are usually fenced and separated from the surrounding population, air bases occupied by the 8th Air Force were located on what had recently been farmers, pastures, and fields. At Deanthorpe, a rural road ran directly through the airbase and an ancient pub located in the nearby village stood within a stone's throw of airmen's barracks. One of the centers of activity on the base was the operations building located a short distance down the road from the flight line. This is where the missions were planned Air crews and aircraft were assigned, briefing materials were prepared, bomb and fuel loads were calculated, and other preparations for the mission took place. Now, where did the air crews eat and sleep? Each group ordinarily consisted of four squadrons. At Deanthorpe, one was located here, a second was located nearby. The third and fourth squadrons were loca located up the country road that ran through the base. Since there were few trucks or buses available and base facilities were spread out over a wide area, how did airmen get from one place to another? The answer, lots of bicycles. As to housing, both ground and air crews lived in Nissan huts like this one, which were hot in summer and freezing in winter. The one coal stove in the middle of the hut was a gathering place for all kinds of activities, mainly keeping warm. And dozens of pin-up pictures reminded the boys of the girls back home. Another important area of the base was a cluster of mess halls, clubs, and recreation facilities. These included the combat mess hall and clubs for enlisted men and officers. The post exchange, or PX as it was known, was the place to buy everything from toothpaste and cokes to stationery and stockings. And, of course, the base included an infirmary where sick and wounded airmen received very professional treatment from the base doctors. One of the buildings served as a basketball court at times, and when chairs and an altar had been added, became a chapel for church services. The air base at Deanthorpe is long gone, and farmers' fields have again replaced what was once a dynamic part of the air war against Germany. For many years, the control tower stood amidst the fields, but now it is also long gone. What remains to remind visitors that an American air base stood here is a memorial to the men of the 401st. But Dean Thorpe has been recreated in miniature in the diorama that stands nearby. Don't leave without seeing it.